Today's NBA has developed to become more of a space and pace kind of league, wherein teams that play small ball lineups, which rely on quickness and perimeter shooting, have already proven time and again that they can win big time. And this paradigm shift has definitely changed how centers are expected to develop. And true enough, guys like Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, or Anthony Davis have all proven that big men still hold certain advantages in a basketball game, provided that they can develop skills which were traditionally exclusive to guards or wing players. And one of the top prospects from the 2021 NBA draft just might add up to that list of highly versatile big men, but in this case, this guy just might be the most gifted and the most intriguing out of them all. And we're talking about 7-foot USC big man Evan Mobley. I mean, the idea that big men aren't that important anymore in today's NBA just doesn't apply to him for a lot of reasons. Mobley basically does what most big wings and most small ball centers in the NBA does, except that this guy is legit 7 feet tall with a 7 foot 4 wingspan and a 9 feet standing reach. And aside from that, he's got outstanding movement skills together with a rare combination of dribble, pass and shoot package which you won't necessarily see from a 20 year old prospect of his size. So what's good guys, it's Rero Balls here and in today's video, we'll take a deeper dive into Evan Mobley's game and where he should fit as a big man in the modern NBA and despite him not being projected as the top overall pick in the 2021 NBA draft, we'll look into why he just might end up as the best player of his draft class when everything is said and done. But before we move on, if you guys happen to enjoy content like this, please make sure to hit that like button as it definitely helps the channel content to reach more people. It only takes a second of your time but it would be much appreciated. So let's get to it. If there's one NBA player who could be considered as Evan Mobley's parallel, it's definitely Anthony Davis. And I mean, this isn't necessarily a comparison based on play style or anything, but if you look at it, just like AD, Mobley also grew up playing as a guard before he hit a sudden growth spurt in high school, which basically explains all those guard skills that he has. And aside from that, he just shares a lot of accolades with AD even prior to entering the NBA. While playing for Kentucky, Anthony Davis became the only player in history to win the Freshman of the Year, Defender of the Year, and the Player of the Year award in a major NCAA conference, until Evan Mobley joined him as the latest player to do that while playing for the USC Trojans in 2020-2021. And in his sole collegiate season, Mobley averaged a steady 16.4 points, 8.7 rebounds, 2.4 assists, and 2.9 blocks a game while shooting 58% from the field. Overall, Mobley led the Pac-12 conference in points, rebounds, blocks, win shares, and box plus minus rating as well. And coincidentally, the last three freshmen to lead the NCAA in win shares before for Mobley were Kevin Love, Kevin Durant, and Anthony Davis, and the only other freshman to lead the NCAA in Bucks Plus Minus rating since 2010 before Mobley were Zion Williamson and again Anthony Davis. And to top it off, Mobley also ranks second to AD among all big men drafted in the top 5 during the past decade in terms of combined blocks and steals average in the NCAA. Overall, Mobley fared better in this category compared to guys like Jaron Jackson Jr., Joel Embiid, James Wiseman, Carl Anthony Towns, and DeAndre Ayton. So I think you just can't help all the Anthony Davis comparisons since at this point, aside from the obvious similarities in size and playstyle, Mobley and AD seem to just share a lot in terms of accomplishments and stats prior to entering the NBA which obviously validates the belief of most scouts that, provided he reaches his projected ceiling, Evan Mobley could end up being just as good or even better than Anthony Davis in the long run. But how good is Evan Mobley exactly and what makes him a special talent? Well first for a big man, this guy is a game changer on defense and I mean that in the best way possible. Mobley averaged 2.9 blocks per game in college thanks to his natural sense of timing and a systematic way of placing his blocks. I mean he's just so good at protecting the paint to the point that he sometimes gives up position near the rim or he even lets his man go by him just so he can get a better angle on a shot block. And the thing is, he also has such a good sense of verticality and discipline on defense which helps him stay out of foul trouble despite playing some heavy minutes as a big man. In fact, he only averaged 1.8 fouls in 34 minutes per game in college and that is actually very impressive considering that he's USC's number one option on defense too. And the best thing about Mobley is that he's also a great defender in space who can constantly defend quicker guys in the perimeter. He's able to defend switches, isolations, and the pick and roll really well because of his quick feet and that paired with his good defensive instincts makes him one heck of a versatile defender. While in this clip, watch how Mobley effortlessly moves his feet in space while being able to defend the supposedly quicker player in the perimeter. Notice how he effectively mirrors his man's movements and stays with him until he ultimately catches him with a block. I mean, 7-footer shouldn't be able to defend in space and move that well, but Mobley is mobile enough to do that. While talented big men like DeAndre Aiden 
and James Wiseman definitely entered the league much stronger than Mobley, but they definitely were this polished as a perimeter defender and this is what makes Mobley so special. So I think it's safe to say that Mobley's future team wouldn't have to hide him on defense, especially against small ball lineups since the guy can just defend switches and he'll be able to match up against the quickest of guards in the NBA. Basically, you can just play Mobley against good floor spacing lineups and you just wouldn't have to worry about him being run off the court especially in a playoff series. But as good as he is in defense, people will still question how he would be able to hold up guarding bigs like Jokic or Embiid in the post, which of course is a valid concern. But personally, I'd rather question how good he'll be in terms of defending wings like KD or Luka or even LeBron James. I mean, he's already that kind of defender. And so what if he can't stop Embiid? It's not like a lot of big men are able to do so either, and if any, Mobley's just as much of a mismatch on offense than any other big man out there. Cause even in the offensive end, Mobley has also shown signs of being a special player. Well, first of all, he has the ability to create his own shot off the dribble from almost anywhere on the floor. And for a guy his size, he definitely makes dribble and drive plays look so easy when in fact, going from the three-point line all the way to the rim on the way to scoring the ball for a seven-footer requires ball handling, quickness, footwork, and body coordination combined. And currently, Mobley already has all of those locked into his skill set. Also, his fit as a modern-day NBA big man looks very good because of his abilities in the pick and roll. With his combination of mobility, timing, and ability to read the floor, Mobley was able to shoot 57% as the role man in pick and roll possessions in college, which percentage ranks as the fourth best in the NCAA tournament this year. But yeah, for a big man, you still can't expect Mobley to bully defenders around the paint yet. Well, that just isn't his game and he isn't that strong yet to pin defenders on his back and power through them. In fact, he only ranked in the 13th percentile of post-up scorers during the college season, but still, there were moments when he showed potential as a steady post-up guy. Mobley loves shooting his staple right baby hook shot over the left shoulder and provided he bulks up moving forward, that shot will be one of the most difficult shots to guard in the NBA. But I mean, regardless of how good of a postal player he could become in the future, the NBA has already moved past the more bruising style of play for big men. Well, like I said, size still matters but the problem for big men is that smaller teams just tend to play faster. But that wouldn't be an issue for Mobley because I think he can give his team the best of both worlds. He'll give you perimeter skills without sacrificing size at the same time. And for sure, I think Mobley doesn't have to be a body banger especially early in his career, it just wouldn't make sense given his current frame. So I think the idea here is to use him as a 7 footer who can initiate offense in space and basically beat perimeter players in their own game given his size advantage. And given his skill set, that isn't impossible at all. I mean although he only shot 12 out of 40 from 3 point range in college which puts him at 30%, his stroke looks pretty solid nonetheless. And he also actually shot much better from the mid range at 52% and he also shot a pretty good 69% from the free throw line. And although I think his release could still get quicker, the thing is Mobley just looks like he isn't afraid to shoot. And most of the time, the kind of confidence that a player shows tells us more than the numbers do. And 40 attempts is definitely a small sample size, so I think it's just going to be exciting to see how he develops as a floor spacer in the NBA with a team that takes full advantage of his shooting potential. And speaking of potential, I think Mobley also has the potential to be sort of an oversized Bam Adebayo type of big playmaker with his passing abilities. While for a big man, Mobley is actually unselfish with a ball and he always looks to make the right read, which often means fighting his open teammates on the floor. Well, he only averaged 2.4 assists, but I mean, there's only so much a player can do when defenses crowd him, especially if there aren't a lot of distributors and shooters on his team. And this has been the problem for Mobley, as his USC team only ranked 112th in the country in assists per game and 295th in 3 point attempts for the season. But I mean, this guy has the potential to be a legitimate playmaker in the NBA, cause he has the vision to make advanced passes whether it be from a live dribble, from the short roll, from the post, or from almost anywhere on the floor. Watching his film, you'll see that he just looks like the type of player who would always look for the open man and make the right passes all the time regardless of the situation in the court. And with his passing, shooting, and defensive skills, he definitely looks like a guy who can be a two-way centerpiece for a good team in the long run. But with all that said, it's still worth noting that Evan Mobley is still an unfinished product. I mean, I'm pretty confident that his two-way skill will develop just fine at the next level, but how effectively he can use those skills will still depend on how how he improves his body frame. I mean, for sure, everything will just be put into waste if he ends up just getting pushed around in the NBA. While at 210 pounds and by looking at his lanky legs and high center of gravity, I doubt that his body is actually built to put on so much muscle in the future. But I don't think that's exactly a problem. I mean, these were also the same questions raised towards Anthony Davis prior to entering the NBA. 
In college, AD rarely posted up against other big men because he wasn't strong enough. While yeah, he gained 30 pounds since first entering the NBA, but to this day, AD still isn't the type of player who can physically dominate and power his way against stronger centers. But as we've seen, he's still able to impact the game in a lot of ways because of his skill and two-way versatility. And I mean, Mobley will enter the NBA a much more respectable shooter than Anthony Davis was. AD only shot 15% from 3 in college. So I mean, despite Mobley's underdeveloped frame, I think all signs point to him being able to impact the game in a lot of ways as a pro. While given his underdeveloped frame, at least early in his career, I think it's gonna be ideal to pair Mobley with a more traditional big man who can sort of take the punishment underneath the basket for him while he plays more of like a power forward or stretch 5 role, who can defend the perimeter and be active as a weak side help defender on the post. Which is why I think landing in Cleveland with a big bodied center like Jared Allen would be an ideal and realistic fit for him. But still, I think the Rockets would be crazy to pass up on this guy at number 2. I mean, aside from the unique opportunity of pairing him with another versatile big man in Christian Wood, I think the idea of Mobley being a pick and roll partner for an explosive scoring guard like Kevin Porter Jr. is just too good to pass on. And for sure, Mobley would most likely be able to establish a defensive culture for a Rockets team who had the third worst defensive rating last season right from day one. But whatever happens, patience will surely be the key for any team that drafts Mobley. At this point, he still might be raw by NBA standards, but his skill set for his size just tells us that his development is going to be worth the wait. Well, the way I see it, Cade Cunningham will probably go number one because he's just that polished and he's already NBA ready playing his natural position. And for sure, Cunningham could definitely be the best player on a good playoff team in the future, but I think Mobley's tools will enable him to be a number two or a number three option in a championship team. And that's why I think he could be the best player from his draft class if he fully reaches his ceiling. So in your opinion, how good can Mobley become and how high should he get picked in the draft? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Again, this is Rero Balls and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.